In this video, we'll be looking at the reducing balance method of depreciation. You should already be familiar with the straight line method. And though this is a little bit more complicated, it's still quite easy to do. And I would say it's a much more accurate way to depreciate an asset, which is why it is used by more companies versus the straight line method. Uh, look at the question here. We see a company has bought a server for $50,000, and the server has a lifespan of five years. Assume the annual depreciation is 30% per year. So going back at this, we say it says it has a lifespan of five years. By lifespan, they just mean at the end of five years, we will be needing to replace a server and get a new server. Okay, so first thing we need to do is fill in the table we have below. So we have three columns. Our columns here are year, depreciation, oops, okay, depreciation, and book value. So book value is the value of the asset um, as shown on the balance sheet. Depreciation just represents how much it's been depreciated in that year. So we'll put our years in here. And so in year zero, we really haven't even bought the, the asset yet. So the depreciation is zero. The book value is 50,000. And I guess if the book value is 50,000, we just bought it, basically. Um, so on the balance sheet, if we had it, it would show uh, 50,000 uh, for the value of the asset. So now in year one, what we need to do is we need to look, and we have our 30% here. So we take 30% of 50,000 which is 15,000. So that means this asset depreciated 15,000 in year one, which gives us a new book value of 35,000. So if we create a balance sheet at the end of year one, the value of this asset would show 35 in our fixed assets. So we continue this, 30% of 35,000 is 10,000. 500. Subtract that from 35 will get us 24,500. Multiply now that by the 30% will give us 7,350 and that will give us 17,150. Continuing on, let's see, that gives us 12,005 and that multiplied by 0.3 is 3,602 which will give us 8,000 404. Okay, so in this is a few things to note. One is this 8,404. That is our residual value. So that is the amount that it is worth once we have used the asset up um, for us. So after five years, we do say, well, it's still worth this amount of money. Hopefully we can sell it for that amount of money. Um, another really important thing to notice on the reducing balance method is the depreciation, how it changes. So we have year one, 15,000, versus year five, 3,602. In comparison to the straight line method where depreciation would have been the same for every year, we see here in year one, it's much, much higher. It's almost, it's you know, four and a half times higher than year five. This is actually much, much more accurate in the way that we value assets. In that, uh, let's assume you buy a car. If you buy a car brand new for $30,000, they say the, the greatest amount of depreciation is just driving that car home. It's no longer new. It is now used. So the most it will depreciate is in that first year, or in this, that case, that first drive. So your greatest amount of depreciation is when it goes from brand new to being used. So there's 15,000. And it will continue to depreciate. The asset will continue to lose value, but at a slower and slower and slower pace, as is shown in the reducing balance method. Unlike the uh, straight line method, where your depreciation is the same every year. This has a little bit more math to do, um, but really not that much more. And that's the reducing balance method.